Well, there's one last thing to take care of here on the bridge over the River Y before we move back to finishing up the scenery and uh, fixing up the track a little bit. And then at that point, this entire north end is done. So the missing element here on the bridge are the two stone abutments that actually hold the entire wooden truss in place. So just to get caught up, what we've been working on so far is building the wood truss here. We've been through quite a few steps finishing this up. Hopefully you've been following along with what we've been doing here. At any rate, the wood truss is now finished and uh, it sets in place quite nicely. Everything fits. All that remains are the two stone abutments. But I have been running trains across here and it's working just fine. And it's actually pretty strong just as it is. Right now the bridge fits tightly in place, held in place by both the track and the scenery. But I've got one locomotive that weighs 50 pounds, so I better get more support under it than just that. You can see here where I've carved out the scenery to hold the truss in place and it sits neatly on top of some of this concrete scenery work but it, it doesn't look very good this way and uh, it's also not supported super well and it was my plan all along of course to put actual concrete abutments under here that are carved to look like stone so let's get on with that so the first thing I did was carve away all of the concrete uh, mortar mix scenery that would be in the way and then I cut out uh, uh, templates here out of foam core because the size is very crucial. The, the abutments have to fit neatly right under the bridge and the bridge has to sit right down on the abutments so that the abutments are actually supporting the truss. And then using my templates, I cut the abutments out of cement board, that same stuff they use in bathroom showers and stuff to, to hold up tile work. And that will be the, the basic structure underneath my cement uh, abutments. I'll build those right on top of the cement board. And I've saved the pieces of scenery that I carved out of here, I broke out of here, because it's my intention to just put that stuff back in place. The abutments are going to be constructed here at the workbench. So the first thing I did is I got some of this expanded uh, wire lath that they use for uh, doing this kind of work, cement work and that, to reinforce it with steel. And then cut that out to fit neatly on top of my cement board. I'm using just regular mortar mix, same thing I've been using on the scenery. And I'm adding a little color to it. But I'm also using this concrete bonding adhesive. My friend Steve, who, who showed me how to do all of this kind of work, he's done tons of it, calls this stuff moose milk. But at any rate, if you add that into your mortar mix, it will really help that mortar mix adhere to uh, other scenery. In this case, I really want it to adhere to my cement board. Now any time that you're putting mortar mix directly in contact with any existing cement, you want to wet down that cement first. And so uh, I'm wetting down my cement board, otherwise it'll pull all of the moisture right out of my mortar mix and cause it to dry prematurely where it's in contact with the cement board. I have to move really quickly here because this stuff sets up rather quickly. So I want to get a thin layer down onto my cement board and then press my wire mesh into that and then very quickly start adding more mix over the top of the wire mesh. I'm trying to get a nice smooth layer on here and I want the whole abutment to be approximately half an inch thick which is to say approximately 16 to 20 millimeters, something like that. And I'm also going to carve all of my stonework into this while it's still wet. Um, so okay. it, it really requires moving, um, moving along quite quickly. At this point, it looks sort of like fudge, uh, almost 
tempted to eat it, but I uh, don't think that'd be a very good idea. At any rate, at this point, I can start pressing the dividing lines in here between the stones. At first, I can just push into this and make the, the lines in here that way. But uh, as it sets up, then I move from pushing my tool into the mix to actually carving into it with a, a more pointed metal object because it's drying. So this first part, I'm actually using some carving tools that Karen has for, for carving Sculpty clay. And it's working really great to just get the basic lines in here. Uh, and it's already starting to set up to the point where the little plastic carving tool isn't quite making it. So to the left here, you can see, rather than just pressing the tool in there, I'm already uh, carving in there with actually a small screwdriver and then I'm coming back with the small screwdriver and widening the lines all the way around and making them as deep as I possibly can. So you can see here I'm coming back with my small screwdriver and just really opening up those lines because there's going to be mortar in here so the the uh, the dividing lines here have to be deep enough that I can press a good layer of mortar mix down into those uh, division points uh, between the stones. Now while the mortar mix is too set up to press a tool down into it, you can see it's still really, really soft, uh, almost like wet sand or something. So it's still really easy to carve and it's also really uh, weak and flimsy so I have to be careful. Uh, in fact, uh, these two stones down here broke loose and I was rather distraught about that, but I grabbed my Gorilla Ultimate glue, which is an outdoor rated glue, and I just glued those back in place, and then I figured that once I get the mortar mix and everything in there, it'll hold it together, and in fact, it, it worked great. Once the mortar mix was set up, these were really strong, and uh, I was very pleasantly surprised. I was afraid that they were so crumbly when they were wet that, Gee, what if they're still crumbly once they're dry? But no, they're, they're solid as concrete for some strange reason. So anyway, that works great. Now I want to test fit these in place to make sure that they fit uh, because I'm assuming that I may have to carve a little bit off around the edges in order to make them fit neatly underneath the truss. And in fact, there were some sort of pokey up parts that kept the whole thing from setting neatly in place. So I used my belt sander with a very heavy grit uh, sand uh, paper, a sand uh, belt on my belt sander, and I was able to just knock down the high spots so they fit in there perfectly. Once they're completely dry, they're a much lighter color than when I mixed them. That's a great tendency here when you're using these colored dyes that you add to the concrete. Over time, they really lighten up which I fully expected. Uh, but what I want to do is add some more color in here using my outside, my exterior rated latex house paints. I've gotten these little small jars just to get more variation in the colors between the stones and darken the whole thing up just a little bit. It's necessary to really dilute those down with a lot of water so that they soak into the concrete rather than just sit on the surface. Now when I'm doing this kind of stonework, uh, if you've seen uh, the series on building the gardener mill and so on, I like to get the stonework a little darker than I want and then come back with a dry brush and lighter colors. So I'm just dipping it in the lighter color and then rubbing off a lot of the paint onto a paper towel so that when I come back over here I just get the lightest amount of this uh, this uh, lighter color over the surface. And because this is sitting on the surface, I know full well that over time it's gonna sort of flake and fall off and stuff. But that, that, that's actually a pretty neat effect when you're working outside. So I'm actually counting on this stuff to sort of flake off and, uh, and fade in the sunlight. So here's what it looked like once all of the paint was fully dry, much lighter color than before because of the dry brushing. And I was really happy with it. And I was thinking, you know, this could just be my finished product, but my intent all along was to add mortar between the stones. And I thought, you know, stick with plan A. Go ahead and put the mortar in there, even though I think it would be just fine without it. 
So, okay, my stonework is actually made out of mortar mix, and my mortar is going to be made out of rockite, this, uh, this uh, cement patching product that they make. It's just absolutely indestructible, and it sticks to cement like glue, and it actually is a cement product. So I had uh, planned all along on using this as a mortar between my stones. It sets up really, really fast, so I'm working in super small batches and doing small areas. It's also necessary to be very careful with this stuff because it's, I think it's very high in lime or something, but it, uh, it not only dries really fast, it gets really hot, and if you get it on your skin, uh, it can burn your skin and don't even think about getting it anywhere near your eyes. So here's the first section that I did. Uh, again, a very small batch. I mixed up a small amount of this and then pressed it down into the, the lines between the stones, making sure it was well down in there, and then came back with a wet towel, a moist, moist towel. And just like doing tile work with grout or something, I just wiped it off of the surface of the stone. Because at that point, it was kind of all over the surface of everything. So in order to get rid of the excess, I just wiped it all away with a, a wet shop towel. When the stuff is wet, it has kind of a deep gray color to it, but you can see that as it dries, it turns almost a stark white. In fact, I was tempted to add a teeny, tiny, teeny bit of, of dark gray to it to make it not come completely to white, but then I thought, no, I think it looks great just with the absolutely pure white mortar lines. And they're not really pure white. They're still somewhat a, a gray color, but it's a very, very, very light gray. It looks great, I think. And a very small amount of it gets down into the nooks and crannies and crevices of the surface of the stonework. And uh, I really like the look of that too. So I was just really happy all the way around with the, how these things turned out. And as I said before, this stuff really sticks like glue to other cement work. There's no way that's going to come loose. Now that I was feeling more comfortable with the process, I thought, I think I can do the whole other abutment in one go. Just mix up a somewhat larger mix, press it down in there very quickly, and wipe it back off all very quickly. Again, being sure to work it down in around those two stones that came loose that are glued in place to make sure that this mortar mix is really holding those two stones in place. And if you notice here, they're down at the bottom, and you can see where there's kind of a large gap there where I've worked some of that material down in there. And uh, yeah, it's <laughs> holding all that stuff together really well. Here again, once the rockrete is dry, it dries to a much, much lighter color, almost white, just a very, very light gray. And here again, I'm, I'm very happy with the look. And uh, those two stones that had come loose are really in there permanently. This is really strong. So I took the abutments back outside to make sure that they still slide in, that I hadn't built up any material along the edges that was going to create a problem. And no, they go right back in exactly the way they're supposed to. And I'm really happy with the look. I, I love the light colored mortar lines down in here. I think it looks great. Once these are all glued in place, I'm gonna come back and patch in some of this area here so that the scenery comes right up to the abutment seamlessly. I'm ready to glue the abutments in place. As I'm doing that, I'm double checking everything to make sure that I'm level left for right and that the exact amount of grade is there trying to make sure everything is plumb level square and that the truss is sitting tightly down on top of the abutments. And then I went ahead and glued them in place just using the, the caulk, the latex caulk that I'm using to seal in around these things. I'm using latex caulk instead of Gorilla Ultimate on the outside chance that if I ever need to pry these things loose, I'll be able to if I've used uh, latex caulk. They're not going anywhere. Heck, just sitting here, they're not going anywhere. I just want to make sure that everything is watertight and that moisture can't get in behind these and freeze or anything. So once the latex caulk is dry holding them in place, I'm going to caulk in all of the edges as well. 
and then I'm going to patch the scenery where I had to chisel it away to make room for the truss bridge and then finish the scenery under the bridge here. There's going to be something of a little uh, dry riverbed slash pond area down here. It should be really fun. And that will be an upcoming video. Uh, and you wouldn't want to miss that, of course. You want to see this entire series. And so if you're not a subscriber to the channel and you're not being notified when I put shows up, then you want to become a subscriber and click your notification bell. I'd like to also pitch the idea of perhaps joining the channel as a member. You can click on the join button which is on the channel page and that will send a few dollars a month our way and we really really appreciate that. But becoming a subscriber doesn't cost anything. It doesn't even hurt or anything. And by setting your notification bell uh, to all notifications you will then be notified whenever we upload a video. And the super, super easy way to become a subscriber is by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And Karen and I will see you here on Sunday with a train show. <laughs> we'll see you then. Bye-bye.